it's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I've got a special guest for you today. You know, I keep meeting new people on a regular basis here in Northwest Arkansas that I think are changing the world. And that's one of the beautiful things about it. Not that people in other parts of the country aren't changing the world, but, you know, I've always said it's a pitiful frog that doesn't praise his own pond. And my pond happens to be Northwest Arkansas. So I actually ran into this gentleman, Dr. Todd Jenkins, a little while ago after I joined the Rotary Club of Fayetteville, the downtown club, as, as I like to say to people, because there are distinctions, there are other Rotary Clubs in the area. But Dr. Jenkins, you know, he, he wears a bow tie. He's a very dapper looking guy. And, and, you know, he flies in and flies out and he's so busy. And one day I just said, hey, what do you do? And, and we had a short chance to chat and I learned a little bit more about him and I'm still learning about him. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring him on the podcast today, because I wanted to learn about him. And I also wanted to highlight and talk about his Young Professional Summit that's taking place on the 9th of August at the Walton Art Center. It's called the NWA YP Summit. YP stands for Young People Summit 2019. And Dr. Jenkins, Dr. Todd Jenkins is one of the masterminds behind this program here in Northwest Arkansas. He's making a difference in the lives of individuals that are just getting out of college and into their careers and and engaging them at a whole different level. And so without further ado, Dr. Jenkins, that was a long rambling introduction, but man, thank you so much for for coming on the podcast today. How are you doing? No, thank you, Randy. I really appreciate that. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me and I'm excited to um, get to know you as well as we have our conversation today. Absolutely. Well, I know you're busy. You're you're at a uh, an event in Indianapolis, and and we were able to get together. That's the one thing I do like about technology. But why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and you know what you know what you are currently doing? I know you're the global inclusion leader at I believe J B Hunt. You're an also a consultant. You're a speaker. You're a trainer and a life coach. Not to be undone with that. You've got a doctorate. You went to the University of Arkansas. I mean, you've done a lot of stuff. And so why don't you kind of give everybody your, all of our listeners here at I Am Northwest Arkansas, your superhero origin story and, and how things got started for you. Yes, no, I'm happy to share. It's fascinating. I was, on a, I was actually on a flight yesterday. So I guess they were prepping me because the, the individual next to me asked me the same question of, what's your story? And we, you know, we didn't have enough time to go into a whole 30-minute story. So I'm Hopefully, I could be a little precise with our talk today. But <laughs> just a little high-level background about me. I'm originally from Columbia, South Carolina, born in the inner city. You know, that was my first place, raised, um, grown and raised, and went through school. I was raised in a very interesting type of environment, background. Our school district was very segregated. I mean, so I was, it was really interesting being raised as an African-American inner city kid of Columbia, South Carolina. And I think throughout that entire experience, pushing through barriers and challenges, it really allowed for me to start finding my grit. And and I didn't know that at that time, you know, my life was being curated for where I'm at today. Just all the different types of exposure that I was able to gain as I got involved with my community, got involved with different community initiatives and, and also education initiatives. So through that exposure, through a village, champions and giants, um, I was able to get into college, which was beating the odds there, beating the odds, even graduate from high school. But going to college, I went to college um, at USC. Then I started working and went to Illinois, started my passion, started aligning around education and leadership and policy. So I did a lot of my focus on that, started working in the university setting as administrator, as well as teaching. And so it was my passion starting to be refined for college student development as well as this community engagement. And I really always had a opportunity to be in networks of individuals that always look different than me, as well as something I can, people I can learn from. 
And um, through that, through that exposure, my platform started to build. I mean, I wanted to have opportunities for others or create opportunities for people to everyday people to get in vulnerable spaces and learn from each other and have that cross-cultural, cross-identity type of dialogue, if you will. And so I would say over the last 10 years, um, I was able to build a platform, a social platform around bow tie, a bow tie concept. And so you were saying a little earlier about you, you always see me in a bow tie. Um, and that was mostly as a brand given to me as bow tie Todd, or some refer to me as Dr. Bow tie Todd. And that was an interesting conversation starter uh, as what they call a talk trigger. And it's definitely all around the world, people will come up and comment about my bow tie. They don't know anything about how I was raised and my background, but that first impression gave them an opportunity to make a choice whether to engage or disengage. And I started to see more people willing to engage about this concept around the bow tie and where did I get it? Why do I wear it? Et cetera. So I started looking at the bow tie and I came up with a, just a really short, quick acronym of how to really engage in these type of conversations. It's pretty simple. The letter B stands for be mentally and physically present and all you do in life and also all you do in a conversation is what we're doing in this podcast today. O is to be open to new ideas because there's going to be so many things that's going to challenge your bias or challenge how you was raised, your values, especially when you talk with various cultures. And W is be willing to share your perspective. So many people come into a conversation, you know, who really want to take over the conversation or they come into the conversation not really to listen or to listen so much that they don't share their self. And I've seen in research and we've seen in our practices when individuals both come with the open mindset and willingness to share, you both can learn so much from each other. And then the last piece, which is the hardest thing of a conversation we have seen, hardest thing listening in the lecture is that TIE, we call that the tie it together. So how do you tie everything together? How do you lead better than you came into the conversation? And so that be mentally open, willing to share and then tie it together, that bow tie philosophy have actually been able to help me you know, in my work, as well as in life, to really connect with individuals and communities that's very different than me all around the world. And so using that, I wanted to go around and teach that. And so I started, we created a curriculum around having difficult conversations, how to have cross-cultural facilitation, et cetera. And we started taking it around the world. And, and now that bow tie philosophy I mean, is being commonly used in corporates and nonprofits and different industry. But I say all that to say is that, you know, where I have been kind of going into my last 10 years, it's finding my niche and my why and trying to get to a place of harmony and align with, you know, my true self and also align with my passion. And my passion is people development. And so I landed there and where I'm at today in the space, I just have an incredible opportunity to work in the world of inclusion um, and building diversity, leading strategies with organizations all around the world and helping unserved and underserved, underrepresented groups be heard and creating systems for everyone to have a aim or a strive for equity. And so I'm still I'm still learning and growing. Um, and so today I'm just happy to be here, happy to be where I'm at. And I and like I say, I really give that to the honor of the village that continue to be around me that's all around the world. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I love that. I mean, I love the bow tie acronym, and it, you're you're absolutely right. I say it all the time. It does take a village, and clearly, the village that surrounded you as you grew up and helped you to be ultimately who you are today did a great job. and And they should all be proud of what you've been able to accomplish in this short time. and And so, I'm excited about it. And I think in a day and in an age where you know this country specifically is, is, is a little challenged right now with identity and some other ch- issues that come up. And we don't make the uh, I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast about politics or anything like that. But I think the conversations that you're having around the country are really important. Tell me just a little bit about what you do on a daily basis. I know you work at J.B. Hunt and you do some other things. I mean, how do you keep it all in order? I mean, you, you have a lot on your plate. <laughs> Well, you know, I try to I try to move from, you know, being busy to being productive. And so I'm fortunate to be in the space where, you know, I have a team that helps um, run um, our consulting firm. And so 
I really do a lot of things from a social platform when it comes to public speaking, leadership development. And so on my my day to day is really with JB Hunt. Um, it's really t- speaking towards those things that I talked towards earlier. So really helping the organization as we continue to get better with our internal and external operations to be best in class, um, really examining daily, having conversations daily, training, you know, daily <laughs> around inclusion strategies. I mean, so I've been very, very fortunate day to day to have operations in place. We're engaging you know, I keep myself well planned and so well scheduled. I would tell you, most people don't know this, but you know, I wake up four o'clock, 4.30 in the morning and I begin my day. I start early, try to get my mind together, meditating and working out. And then I get on a call and I get brief about things that's happening in the firm. And then I go start my day to day at JV Hunt. And then time I get leave the clock, either I'm going to a community board meeting or speaking somewhere and things of that nature. So it's every day is it's different and it's exciting. And so one will probably say, wow, you, when do you have time? Well, trust me, I've learned to make time what I need to make time for. And that's, that's my, with my values, my family and my working community. Yeah. And, and it's, it's so funny you say that I'm, I'm a big routine guy and I get up early in the morning as well. Not quite 4.30 or 4. That's, that's more <laughs> like a Navy SEAL early, but, uh, <laughs> but, but I have learned that it's, to create a habit of getting up at the same time every morning, regardless of when you go to bed, can benefit you in the long run. And I've also learned, like you have, that if you can create a little bit of space for yourself first thing in the morning, even before the rest of the family wakes up, it makes a difference in the world for what you're able to accomplish. So I certainly applaud you for being diligent and following that because honestly, if you didn't do that, you wouldn't be able to do half the things that you've been achieving. So I certainly give you some kudos on that. So talk a little bit about this whole program, because one of, the, one of the reasons why I wanted to get you on to the podcast as quickly as possible is because I'm all about helping young people. I think that Gen Z in particular, but definitely even millennials, I'm a Gen Xer. I don't know what you are. I assume you're probably a millennial, but maybe not. But I just think that it's important. I think we are sometimes doing a disservice to the young people by casting everybody into one big pot and not you know, providing enough direction in terms of, hey, this is what you do. This is how you do it. I grew up being mentored and helped out by some people from the great generation, some people from the baby boom generation. And I was helped out tremendously. And there was always somebody that would take me under the wing. And I don't know that you necessarily always see that in this day and age with the younger people, because a lot of times they're dismissed so quickly by older people that have kind of been there and done that and assume that these younger kids coming out of school now are a little bit lazier than we were. They play video games. They do all this other stuff. They are into social media. So, you know, I don't really have time for all that. And, you know, you've kind of gone in a whole other direction by identifying these young people and speaking life into them through this program. So why don't you talk a little bit about the genesis of this program and why it's so important to you? Yes. No, great question. You know, and I would tell you, you know, with professional, well, first, let me state young professional. Most people will, you know, they ask, well, how do you define a young professional? Is it an age? Who is the target audience? And I would tell you, we struggle as a team to even call it Young Professional Summit as we continue to evolve it because, you know, our summit, the concepts are, it can go across and transfer through any generation based on where you're at and based on what you're willing to engage or learn. And so I, I see that, you know, age is just a number, but maturity is a mindset. And so as we mature together as professionals, our summit curriculum reflects that growth and that growth mindset. So we have the tools that's throughout the summit curriculum to kind of help with that. So I would start there just kind of defining that yeah, everyone is welcome to the Young Professional Summit. We don't define it by age or uh, within those specific demographics, but we do look at it as your willingness to come and learn and network with these tools. So start there. As far as how the summit was created, it was actually around four years ago, we received a message in the Rotary Club of Fayetteville around Rotary International willingness to partner with individual donor to give out 15, 10 to 15 
one-time grants of $15,000 to individuals around the world or in the state to do something around to grow Rotary or expose Rotary within young professional groups. And so it was really whatever that could be. So we had to propose and we had to basically compete for that grant. And, you know, I submitted documentations and we was able to put together a framework of what it could look like. And I, you know, immediately, immediately when I got this opportunity, I thought pretty big. And some of the scopes of the suggestions for the grant was to do kind of like a club meeting or a town hall meeting or something like that. But I, I was like, I wanted to do something regional to, because Rotary has been extremely wonderful for me. Just being able to pour my passions in Rotary with our study abroad programs, et cetera, and service around the world. So I wanted other people in my like-minded in my network of community of young professionals to be engaged with that. And so as a region of Northwest Arkansas, as you see, it's a regional hub that we're moving to get more of the region together and more aligned with our initiatives. So with that being said, our framework was to do something for the region because I get a lot of opportunities to go to so many conferences. And some of these conferences, when I was starting my career, it was very expensive to travel. I was blessed to be able to have a work or a job that supported that that cost, but it, the budgets are tight. So the, I, I thought of what can we do to bring a best in class summit conference, leadership conference to our area? We have all this talent that's untapped to come and share their story right in our backyard. And so with that vision in mind, I was able to partner with the Rotary Club of Springdale and Northside and the Rotary Club of Bentonville. And I, I call their president. I say, send me your your most engaged young professional member of your club. Now, of course, it's not many in all the clubs that's under 35 or, you know, what they consider young professional at that time. But I was able to get individuals, Will, Tim, and, and Keaton, and we all got together. And I wanted to make sure it was a shared vision and shared mission. And so at that time, we met weekly and we, we put the framework and we came with our concept and mission for this one day one summit, because we had a lot of young professional groups that did the networking and programming throughout the year. So we didn't want to be a repeat of that, but we wanted to bring people together for a purpose and have value added. And so we, we develop our pillars around a holistic development, which we do today, which is personal development, professional development, and community civic development. Because a lot of conferences, these professional conferences, they don't usually have all three or they don't talk towards all three. So you usually go there and learn more about self-branding or how to jump your career or you go to the public policy panels or community policy panels. And so we wanted to put all that together. And so our vision is to enact change or our, our mission is to give them the tools, equip young professionals or our participants with the tools to enact change within themselves, within their companies and the community in which we all live, wherever you define that to be. And so we did that for the first year at John Q. Hammond. We had only a one-time grant. We shot for participant list of 150 because we did everything. It was very intentional from, you know, plated meals to community service event, et cetera. Well, we ended up getting more than 150 members showing up. So that was a good problem to have. But, you know, that was like, wow, we see that it's definitely interest in this. And so we did that. We had Donnie, Donnie from Don Tyson. Donnie Smith was one of our keynotes. We had Roy Rum from Rotary Club, which one of our oldest members of Rotary Club of Fedville. There were some of our keynotes and we had all these awesome breakout sessions and we did a community service project and wrapped up with the after summit social with Grubb himself. He, he sponsored something for us. And so it was this wonderful, so much positive energy that we went back to the table and we was like, wow, could we only charge like $20 or something for a ticket? We had some money left over and we was like, okay, we're giving this to a nonprofit. But one thing that came out of some of our first year that made us really continue the conversation, we had a, we partnered with the Rogers Chamber of Commerce. They have a merger leaders program and they were wanting to do something similar with the community initiative. So we partnered with them to do our afternoon community enrichment session. And out of that session came 10 ideas that action plans or 10 actions to go and really make a change in Northwest Arkansas. And so we started to follow those projects and we were able to see some of those initiatives 
money. And so with that, as an outcome of the summit, we kind of followed those projects around that continued conversation around, wow, we can do this again. We should do this again. Most people are talking about we should do it again. So that was our first year that lift up. But remind you, it was just a one-time grant. And this is just all us volunteering coming together. So we didn't really have an infrastructure to sustain this group. And so we came back together and, you know, we did a call for application to build a leadership team and we built the leadership team and we worked hard to go out and get sponsors to bring another event like this back to Northwest Arkansas. And so then the next year we were able to have it at the record in Bentonville and our goal was to kind of rotate it around the region. And every year people continue to come back and it grows. Uh, Last year we had almost 400 people. And so it's, I mean, it has grown over the the last three years and we've been blessed to have different outstanding talent on our our stage, our main stage for keynotes and breakouts that's just really helping our community really come in, engage, learn and grow. And so that's how it started. That's where we're at, you know, now. I mean, like I said, it's a one day basic leadership conference and we actually have seen the attraction come from all around the state, also all around also, we had some people come in from Kansas and Oklahoma and all types of industries from startups to recent graduates, young professionals, midlife professionals, managers, supervisors who want to learn how to engage with young professionals and also untapped community. So we partnered with NWAC to help bring some Marshallese college students and Marshallese young professionals last year. So we're trying to every year, we're trying to stay relevant to what's happening in the industries and in the diverse region that we live in and and really trying to fill that toolbox of young professionals or participants who come. So that's what we'll be doing again for um, on August 9th, our our theme this year. We always have a theme, a sub-theme. It's space, uh, no, last year was space and forward. This year it's influence. So we're, we're only, we're talking and focusing on how do we influence those three areas, ourselves, our community, and the companies in which we live or work. And so that's what we're really focusing on because we are in a very interesting time. Well, you know, most people say we always have these waves of, you know, within the political culture or just these conversations around national dialogue. And sometimes we can get so wrapped in being told and what we need to do versus bringing our whole self to the conversation and how do we influence change for the betterment of all people. So we're really focusing on a lot of that, of those topics and breakout sessions around the one day summit this year on August 9th. Yeah, that's exciting. And even for people that are listening to this podcast after this event, we'll make sure that you can check out the show notes and find out more information about all the things that Dr. Todd is doing with professionals in the Northwest Arkansas area and beyond. I think it's important to point out, as you said, the focus is on the personal and professional development as well as community and civic involvement. I got to say that that's really where the rubber meets the road, especially for younger people. It's something that I learned early on that it's, there's an importance to giving back. I've even said it on this podcast before that my grandfather always taught me that if you give back to the city or the location that you're in in some way, shape or form, it will ultimately give to you and it will you know, it will also, it will present things to you that you never imagined if you're willing to give of yourself in some ways to serve the community. So I really applaud what you guys are doing. And I think this is, this is the perfect forum to ignite and generate that. And that, you know, I'm using, I'm borrowing a word that's on the front of your website there. It says, ignite your passion for this event on August 9th. So I'm really excited to see what happens. I I will be in town and I hope to be able to come and at least take a closer look at it. But again, even for somebody that is not, that is listening to this podcast after the event, how can they get involved? How can they connect with you to learn more about what you're doing here in Northwest Arkansas? Yeah. So I would tell you the the first point of reference that's what you're looking at is our website um, about the Young Professional Summit at www.nwayypsummit.com. Dot com. Go there. Our whole summit curriculum and topics and speakers rollout is there to learn more about the event for August 9th. Post the summit if you're hearing this. Connect with us on Facebook. We have NWAYP Summit on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, and so we definitely throughout the year kind of post a few things for people to continue to think about as they move the conversation forward beyond the summit. But reach out to us. Reach out to us on Facebook or social media or email. 
if you want to learn more, get engaged with us, with the planning team, or you want to be a future speaker, or you would like to support the summit by sharing your product, of sharing your story, of your, your company, et cetera, with us. So we're all here to engage and work together. So please reach out. Personally, my social media is uh, Dr. Bowtie Todd on Facebook, as well as Instagram, as well as a Facebook page, Bowtie Todd Jenkins. And so feel free to connect with me. I, I would love to grab coffee with you um, or hop on a call or Skype call and learn your story and see how we can help each other as we continue to make our community better than we found it. And so we're all open to ideas. We don't know everything. I don't know everything, but I do know something. The people who know things is the people I could talk to just like Mr. Randy today. And I think if we continue these conversations like this wonderful podcast, the encouragement there is to go out and try to talk to someone differently to learn their story so we can connect better in the workplace, in the community, and also for ourselves. Well, man, I could not have said it better. I really appreciate that and uh, certainly want to encourage folks. We're going to put a bow in this particular conversation, but it's I'm going to say it's to be continued because I know that you have a lot of other things to share and I want to delve into those maybe on another podcast. But for right now, we def- I know you've got somewhere to be and we wanted to get this particular episode out and into the hands of as many people as possible prior to this event. If you happen to come to the YP Summit, the NWA YP Young Professional Summit 2019, and you've heard of, you come because you heard about it on this podcast, please grab Dr. Todd and let him know, let him know that you heard about it first here on I Am Northwest Arkansas. And I think that would be great. Now, Dr. Todd, as, as a resident of Northwest Arkansas, I would love for you to share, because again, this, this is about the, the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life here. So I know you have a life here in Northwest Arkansas. Just tell us real quickly, where do you like to go hang out when you, when you have pulled the bow tie off and you're just relaxing and you're just Todd? What do you like to do here in Northwest Arkansas? Oh, that's a really good question. It's not many times I pull the bow tie off. So, um, <laughs> but it's, I do pull the bow tie off when I go to work out and, you know, when I go to, uh, to relax, et cetera, um, to the beach. I love, I love to travel. So um, I do travel a lot outside of Northwest, Northwest Arkansas. But I would say some of the, the hidden gems that I found here in our area, I love to um, explore nature um, and go for a hike. Uh, with my wife, or we'll definitely we hit the staples of going to Crystal Bridges event, um, going to check out some of the concerts at the Amps as they come through. I'm involved with a lot of different community initiatives, so I spend a lot of things on weekends doing service projects with several different nonprofits, and those are the things that I spend my space and you spend a lot of my time with, and you may not see me with a bow tie on out there engaging within the community, but as far as socializing, that has been my group, definitely hanging out with a lot of Rotarians, a lot of friends within, within our uh, Rotary Clubs, We're doing social events with them as well. But it's, it's several different places um, of attraction, if you will, from a social standpoint of amenities and from a nightlife. Um, you know, Northwest Arkansas is very interesting, a very, very diverse hub, a variety of food and cuisines and things like you and it's untapped so you have to go out and kind of search and it's always something to do here so I don't really actually have a set place that you're going to probably say okay Todd will be there on Thursday Friday <laughs> we, every day is very different yeah. uh, for me uh, when I'm in town but I definitely do enjoy going out and exploring these things as we continue to bring really cool stuff to the area you know we're about to have a top golf and it's so yeah. much region is working on building with the infrastructure that the world is starting to really take notice beyond, you know, with beyond our big friends at Walmart. And I don't, I know a lot of residents may be hearing this is like, well, that's the problem. We're telling the world how good we are and everyone that want to move here. But I would tell you that it's some exciting things happening in Northwest, whether you're here or a resident now. And I think we should be excited for the growth. And if you're not excited, come out and let your voice be heard and come to some of these community platforms. And we could we could talk through it um, together with our local officials. Yes, no, absolutely. That was that was well put. And the last thing I'm going to put you on the spot for because we always like to talk about food on this episode on this uh, podcast. <laughs> favorite, favorite restaurant? What if I had it to twist your arm and say we're going to one place to eat here in Northwest Arkansas? What would it be? Oh my gosh, one place. 
know, you know, so you know many, I, right? I'm, I'm from the person, you know, I'm a person of inclusion. So I always ask, what's your preference? Do you have any restrictions? <laughs> what do you have? What, you know, what, what, what are you excited to try? So it definitely depends on the person, but you know, I definitely, I definitely do enjoy going to some of the restaurants in Bentonville. You got some mom pops and shops that's popping up food trucks. And you also, I'm a big seafood lover. So you're going to, you're going to catch me, you know, at the catfish hole, whether you have the catfish <laughs> hole or uh, you also have the uh, different seafood places on, uh, on the square in Bentonville. But if you like burgers, you know, you have the nice burger place in Fayetteville, steak, I mean, those, you have those steak. I mean, you just name it. It just really depends because I don't want to offer those steakhouse when you may be a vegetarian. It may not right. work out too well for you. Right. So right, I, right. so I, I say, you know, it, food is a whole nother podcast for me because I, I used to be a big foodie, but now I've been on this health journey and having great food. And so I've been trying a lot more of the green, the green leafy substance that people get off their plates. Right. <laughs> so I've been, um, I've been actually limited to some of the things I've been eating a lot lately, just have a, a better life and a healthy lifestyle. But it is, once again, I'm sorry I didn't answer your question directly because it is so many options and it also depends on the person who's coming out to enjoy the lunch or dinner or food with me. Well, I no, I appreciate that answer. And that just proves my point that we are not one dimensional when it comes to food <laughs> here in Northwest Arkansas. It's not just chicken and french fries and all that other stuff. I mean, that is available, but we, we've got a wide and varied palette. I finally went to the preacher's son. Oh, the uh, preacher's son. Yeah, I, w- I finally went there uh, the other night and I was absolutely blown away. I don't know what Matt Cooper is serving up in that kitchen, but he is killing it and the food is amazing. Oh, yeah. I, I actually can't wait to have him on this podcast. We're going to do an episode because they keep talking. Everybody keeps mentioning that place. And I finally went there. That's my new favorite restaurant. But you're absolutely right. There is so much to choose from. And it's hard to just, I mean, you're being politically correct by not choosing one. I am not, but uh, because I have mentioned one, but, <laughs> but you're absolutely right. I think the point is there is a lot to be experienced here in Northwest Arkansas when it comes to cuisine and that's another exciting thing about this place. We are not one dimensional as far as that's concerned. So we'll, we'll end with that. Dr. Todd, I really appreciate you coming on. And I certainly look forward to serving with you at our Rotary Club in downtown Fayetteville and doing some amazing things in the future. I wish you nothing but success the week after next in the Northwest Arkansas Young Professional Summit 2019. Again, it's August 9th. You got to check it out at the Walton Art Center. You can visit nwaypsummit.com. All of this information will be in the show notes. You can register for the event. It is not too late. The agenda, the speakers, the story, the sponsors, everything that you need to know about this program is on that website. And we, we will make sure to link to it. If you are listening to this post this event, definitely connect with Dr. Todd, connect with what he's doing, his bow tie movement, everything that he's about makes sense. So I really want to encourage you to do that. And so, Dr. Todd, thank you so much for taking time. I know you've got to run, but we really appreciate having you on the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Thank you so much, Randy. Well, there you have it, folks. Dr. Todd Jenkins hanging out with us uh, has been uh, all over the world, but he's making an impact right here in our own backyard in Northwest Arkansas. There's a lot happening between Bentonville and Fayetteville and the surrounding areas. And we really want to encourage you to continue to find out all of the great things that are happening. The thing that I love about this particular podcast, again, I'm going to toot my own horn here, is that we're trying to expose you to things that you may not even know about. And we hear over and over again from people that, that have lived here all their lives that, wow, you shared something with me that I had never heard before about this area and I grew up here. So I feel good about that. We're going to continue to do that here on the podcast. So we appreciate you listening. Just check us out wherever good podcasts can be found, specifically on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to podcasting, you can listen to us. Soon, we're going to have an Alexa app for you to check out I Am Northwest Arkansas. And we're gonna, we have a lot of new things in the work coming up where you'll be able to subscribe to our email list. And the last but not least, we just launched our website, IamNorthwestArkansas.com. It's always been available, but we just finally put it fully together. So we'd love for you to visit that and check it out. You can join our email list from there. You can 
just link to it and listen to any episode or all the episodes. And uh, so everything is available to you. It is mobile optimized. So you can save the link right on your phone, on your browser screen and and, uh, check it out whenever you can. We just want to encourage you to do that and share it. If you like what you're hearing, please share podcasts like this with your friends. Because as I always say, sharing is caring. That's all we have for today. Again, I appreciate our guest, Dr. Todd Jenkins, and I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and this, that's right, this is I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.